Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK and bringing you the news. Well, not really the news, I just bring up my opinion and I share lots of different things. So if it's the first time you're visiting my channel, please like, subscribe and share. Today I was listening to Nick Ferrari of, on The Pledge and the way he started off um, the show talking about foreigners getting free NHS. It was very provocative. And I thought to myself, you don't even know half the story. It's people like you that create this anger and hostility against foreigners. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what he said. I'm not going to show you all of it, but I'm going to show you the main part of how he starts his show. If you weren't paying your fees to, say, a tennis or a golf club, would you really expect to be able to use the courts or the course for free? No, I thought as much. Then what on earth possessed the doctors and other medical staff at the BMA conference voting in favour of putting a stop to charging foreign patients for NHS care? Some of these mad medics, who are clearly a case for treatment themselves, even said the practice made health staff, quotes, complicit in racism and was, quotes again, a fundamentally racist endeavour. This is pure and simple health tourism. Remember, it's not A&D provision, which is available to all. And by its very nature, the actual cost can never be known. It's anywhere between 200 million or 2 billion pounds. If you're in agony right now, waiting for an operation, or you've been denied crucial drugs due to the postcode lottery that is part of our healthcare system, I reckon you'd feel all that money could be better spent. These are one set of doctor's orders it's best to ignore. Yeah, so if you heard that, you're bound to get into a rage, aren't you? Well, a lot of people who are biased against foreigners. They're bound to get into a rage when you hear Nick Ferrari say that. And then you have that, um, what's her name, that, oh, Sampong, I can't remember her first name. Anyway, oh, I'm not going to say anything. But anyway, um, my point is, is that they only tell you half of the story. What the situation is, is that all foreigners that come into the country on limited leave to remain or as students pay an immigration health surcharge towards NHS. They pay it up front, £400 a person. It went up from 200 to 400 from January this year. Now, a lot of those people, thousands of them, are paying that surcharge and they're not even using the service because they're healthy young people, but they still have to pay it. There might be a few that have to go to the GP or whatever, but they're not really getting value for money. So they kind of overcompensate for those who may not be able to afford it. So what this system, the doctors are saying, in effect, is and there are a lot of people out there who haven't got the money up front. And, the, the, you know, rather than them have their ailments and spread them all over the place if it's, if it's infectious or if, the, if it's life-threatening, they don't get treatment for it because they don't have the money. What they're saying is, is that it's, you know, they need the, to allow for these people to have, to be able to access healthcare without paying the money up front. They're not saying they're not paying it at all. They're saying they're not paying the money up front. So when Mick Ferrari goes on his little rampage and starts stirring the pot, and a lot of people, that's all they want to hear, those few words and all, oh, you know, it's all over the papers, it's everywhere. It's just unfair and it's biased media and it's media by omission. Anyway, as usual, I like to read out what I have, the information I've collected. I'll put a link in the description so you can see for yourself what I'm talking about. Okay. So a lot of black people, they're being penalised for being the visible other and they're called foreign for the wrong reasons. The reason why I wrote that down is because one of the speakers in that show was talking about how people class people as foreign just because of the colour of their skin or because they have an accent. 
it doesn't seem to occur to people that you don't have to be foreign just because you've got a colour in your skin. Not unless, this is a point, if by foreign it means that you are not white, then yes, we fall into that category. But if by foreign it means you're not born in the country or you're not entitled to be in this country, that's a different thing. And I think a lot of people see foreign as being someone of colour and someone with an accent, regardless of whether or not you're born in the country. And that is why she said foreign for the wrong reasons. Because we should only be foreigners if we're not born in the country, if our parents aren't born in the country, and sometimes they make it go back to the grandparents. But the fact of the matter is, if you're born in the country, you should not be called a foreigner. But by these standards and by the way they work it out, as long as you're a person of colour, you're a foreigner. So, BMA, that is the, um, the Medical Association, the British Medical Association, is not talking about people coming from abroad to get an operation. That's the, another inference that Ferrari made later on in the show, that they're coming over here to have these big operations and going back. Who's going to allow that? It's just not going to be allowed. And also, he was talking about people coming over here pregnant and having their babies. They can't do that anymore. It's not allowed. When they reach up, when they, if they get to the airport and they're heavily pregnant, they're not allowing them in. So I don't know where he gets off saying they're just coming over here, use, having babies over here and using up our services. And it's a really provocative and it's misinformation. And it's the kind of information that causes ruckus, it causes discord and it causes resentment and it's not necessary. If you don't know what you're talking about, just be quiet. But don't kind of stir the pot when we're already in a, in a, in a kind of environment that's so um, sensitive. Anyway, BMA is concerned, this is the British Medical Association, that people who cannot afford to pay the, NH, uh, the NHS surcharge up front. If they're dying of cancer, they are unlikely to seek help. If they have a contagious disease, they could pass it on because they can't afford to go to the hospital. This is BMA's concern. And sometimes when these people are not treated, they end up becoming emergencies. And in that way, instead of it being a primary care situation that they can deal with quickly and, pre and prevent it getting any worse, it ends up being an emergency, which is compulsory. They have to see them. And by that time, it's probably even too late. Ah, oh dear. Um, uh, let me see. What else have I got here? I wrote down some little notes. Uh, presumption of guilt. Assume that they did not have the right to access services. This is a hostile environment where those, you know, the guy had cancer, he couldn't access health care because, you know, they had the doctors and they had landlords and everybody else acting as border guards. So because they one person didn't have a document from 1972, they assumed he was illegally in the country, prevented him getting health care, and he ended up nearly dying of cancer. He was fortunate enough that they found out in time so he could he could resume getting his treatment. But it was another, it's just like that. They, the, the, Whoever these immigration officials are, they just assume that from your black, you're a foreigner and you don't belong in the country. And it's not the right attitude to have. We're supposed to have an attitude of fairness and not unbiased. That is supposed to be the attitude, especially when you're dealing with government and people in power and people in management and you know the judiciary service okay if you have the little odd guys on the street you know being racist that's a totally different ball game 
But when you have people who have the power to make decisions and who are there to protect and who are there to deliver a fair and unbiased service, they shouldn't be having these kind of ignorant thoughts and perceptions. They should know better. You know me, I get into my little frenzy every now and then. Um, that's what I was saying. The Windrush generation denied life-saving treatment, even though they had the right to be in the country. Um, what else have I got here? Uh, yes, okay, Ferrari was... No, not even Far Ferrari, that Joe Sam Sarpong. She was going, oh, if we go to America, you have to pay. It's the same here. The thing with America is that everybody pays across the board. Whether you're a foreigner or whether you're indigenous, you pay your health insurance across the board. You don't pick out the foreigners and say you pay, but the indigenous people don't pay. They don't do that. Everybody pays. So it's no point saying, oh, when you go out to America, you get health insurance. Of course you have to get health insurance. Of course you do. Anywhere you go, you have to get health insurance. But that is not the point. The NHS is a totally different service. And it's not a free service because we, the taxpayers, pay for it. But the same token is that they are being supplemented by the foreigners coming into the country. So if there are a few that cannot afford to pay that money up front, they should not be disadvantaged. They should be able to pay it when they can. Especially if they've got a life-threatening illness. Ah, uh, let me see what else we've got here. Oh yeah, this guy in America now, Shaquille Dukes, he's 23. He goes to the hospital. They uh, plug in his IV machine because he's, I forget what illness he has. But anyway, the doctor said, you know, rather because you have to do it for a while, you could, you're allowed to go outside the hospital and walk in the grounds. This guy walks into the grounds, a white security guard sees him and starts telling him his teeth in the people them teeth. <laughs> Why the hell would you come out with an injection in your arm with it attached to a machine trying to teeth the machine? Honestly. Anyway, the police are called, he was arrested. Now he's suing for you know he's suing the state for racial profiling. But the fact on the matter is the same thing. The perception that black people want something for nothing. That black people are criminals. You know, you've got it wrong, guys. Some of us black people have got more than you. And you know, it's it's really annoying when you think that, you know, despite all of our contributions, despite working all these years, despite paying into the system, despite operating legally, there's always exceptions, not only in um, the black community, but in the white community as well. You have white people committing fraud. Stacks of fraud with tax. You have white people, you know, trying to rip off the dole. It's not so easy now, but you do get them. So it's, you know, it's, it's not just black people. So I don't see why black people are constantly targeted and penalised. You know, and this man, stuck to an IV machine, they arrest him and put him in bloody jail. Now, they, then they contact the doctor. The doctor has to admit, yes, we told him he could go outside. And, you know, it's unnecessary. Talk to the man. Don't make assumptions. Talk to the man. Then you tell him, okay, I'm going to check with the doctor. You check with the doctor to verify the facts. And everything's hunky-dory. But, oh, no. He, he can't do that. He says he starts accusing and, you know, all these bad-mouthing. It gets out of hand. The police are called. And the next thing you know, the man's put in jail with a bloody IV machine. Oh, I don't know. But this is what this um, the hospital thing's about. They're assuming that foreigners are coming over and they want to use the NHS for free. 
Before I did these um, immigration videos, I didn't know that foreigners paid an immigration health surcharge. I am sure there's lots of people who do not know that the foreigners who come from abroad into the UK pay an immigration surcharge. It's 400 a year. So if they've got a two year visa, they pay 800 and that's per person. They're coming with their family. Each person pays that money. So don't think they're coming over here for free. They're not. And the assumption that we're always trying to get something for nothing is really annoying. That's me having my little rant. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, what they're saying is that it's a two-tier system at the moment, which push people who need treatment underground and then they get worse and are forced to attend emergency. Doctors do not want to be border guards. They don't want to treat. They want to treat. They don't want to have to pick and choose based on income and status. You know, and all of that is extra work and they're already stretched. So can you imagine? They can't just treat somebody who's coming in. They've got to check the records. They've got to check their immigration status. They've got to check whether or not, I don't know if they're working, what other income. I don't know what that's about. What kind of income they have. What's that got to do with it? But what they're saying, the national service is not an international service. Yes, and that's why it charges. That's why it charges foreigners to pay. So even if they don't use the NHS, they've already paid up front. And that is all. They can't come into the country until they paid it. It's a part of the application process. So, but I think there's a sector now, it would seem that when they go um, to the hospital, if they are undocumented and they don't and they don't have access to the NHS because they're undocumented, and that could be because their application is going through, it doesn't necessarily mean they're illegal. So we don't have to jump to negative conclusions that they're illegal and therefore they should be penalised. Some of these people are just waiting for their paperwork, but because they're waiting for their paperwork, they still cannot access benefits and they cannot access the NHS. And so these people don't have the money up front. So what BMA is saying is that these people should be allowed to access the NHS in these circumstances. And the reason why they're calling it racial profiling is because the majority of these people are, are black. They are foreign nationals. They are these ones who are trying to get their indefinite leave to remain and it's being dragged out. It used to be six months, being dragged out 18 months to a year. These people can't access services and it's through no fault of their own. They've paid the money. They've paid the, um, what do you call it, the immigration fee. And they still, because they've stopped the benefits, they can't go to the hospital. So what they're saying is that, you know, in this circum in this situation, these people could be sick or anything can happen because, you know, cancer is caused by stress. And if you're stuck in a hole and you can't find yourself out of it, you are likely to develop cancer. A lot of people don't know that ca um, cancer is primarily stress, stress um, triggered. Among other things, we all have cancer cells, but the stress, stress triggers cancer. Anyway, um, the Department of Health and Social Care said British taxpayers support the NHS and it's only right that overseas visitors also make a contribution to our health service so everyone can receive urgent care when they need it. You see how they word that for people to read. They word it as though for people who do not know about the immigration health surcharge, they think that these black people come over, or whoever they are, Asian, whoever they are, come over here dossing up the NHS. Why don't they put it in perspective? Why don't they tell people the truth? Instead of stirring the pot all the time. This is what's caused problems from time memorial. Misinformation. People not knowing the facts. I didn't know the facts before I started researching stuff. So the same way I didn't know. 
lots of people don't know and they rely on the media the media tells them half of the story and then everybody gets into a ruckus they start you know getting angry they start going out there and and ill-treating people when it's not necessary it's not necessary oh the media really makes me angry when they don't tell the truth but then it wouldn't cause sensationalism, would it, if they told the truth? If everything was played, they say the truth doesn't sell papers. Sensationalism does. So they've got to do it this way. Um, what else? The way the media and this guy on the pledge is making it sound is that foreigners, and yes, they have to have a digger undocumented as if they're getting NHS free of charge. They're not telling you about immigration health surcharge. Oh, well, I've already said that. Um, Britain's doctors have urged ministers to scrap controversial rules that force immigrants to pay up front before they can receive NHS care for the serious illness such as cancer. See, they're not saying it for anything. They're talking about serious illness, serious illnesses such as cancer. The British Medical Association has become the first body representing medical staff to call for the complete abolition of the charges, which have been heavily criticised by MPs and health charities. Oh yes, it would, wouldn't it? The BMA's demand follows mounting criticism of the rules for stopping undocumented migrants from accessing care they need because they cannot pay the fees in advance. In cases highlighted by The Guardian, some of, some of those denied care died. It's not right. It's not right. They should, be, if their if their application is going through, they should be given a temporary document that allows them to access. Because it's not their fault why it's taking so long for the process to go through. They shouldn't be penalised. It's like it's like you know they're just holding them hostage, holding them hostage. I don't know what they want them to do. The National Health Service Charges to Overseas Visitors Amendment Regulations 2017 compels hospitals in England to check overseas visitors' eligibility for free NHS care and seek payment upfront from those deemed ineligible, such as asylum seekers and visa overstayers. So they've put that, they made an amendment, haven't they? Charging is not only harmful for those who are charged, it is a public health implications for all of us and introducing charging for some makes it easier to extend charging to the rest of us. In a pilot in London to check people's eligibility for health care, only one in 180 people whose cases were looked at were found not to qualify. One out of 180 was found not to qualify. At the same time, NHS doctors and nurses are placed in an impossible position, prevented from providing, sorry. At the same time, NHS doctors and nurses are placed in an impossible position, prevented from providing health care to people who cannot afford to pay. Dr. John Chisholm, who chairs the BMA's Medical Ethics Committee said, our members feel strongly that NHS care is free at the point of delivery and that this principle must be enacted. Charges deter people from seeking the care that they need. This damages not only their own health, but they may have implication for public health too. Just can you imagine somebody walking around with a lurgy, touching you and goodness knows what? And they're afraid to go to hospital because they haven't got the money. Or they just won't go because of the money. What would you prefer? Would you be able would you prefer to catch some the lurgy from somebody who's walking or sitting next to you on the bus or brushing next to you on the underground? Or would you prefer that person to go and get help and not have to pay for it up front? Because the system has disadvantaged them. While people who are not UK residents have had to pay for NHS care for nearly 40 years, 
we have exemptions in place to protect public health and the most vulnerable patients. Urgent treatment must never be withheld, regardless of whether charges may apply. Health charities and groups working with migrants, migrants welcome the BMA's decision. James Skinner, a nurse and access to health campaigner at MedAct, hailed the move as an important step, adding, shockingly, the Department of Health continues to force this policy on NHS Trust, despite considerable evidence that people experiencing ill health are deterred from seeking care. Cancer patients are denied life-saving treatment, and many NHS trusts resort to using bailiffs to collect debts from destitute patients. What a cruel, cruel world we live in. And that's all I've got to say for now. Bye-bye.